Okay, so now we're going to go over the muscle fiber types. You have three types of muscle fibers, two main ones and one intermediate one. And we're also going to go over the characteristics of each one. And that being said, let's get started. Muscle fibers and their types. Muscle fiber types vary in their chemical and mechanical properties. There are two main categories of muscle fibers, type 1 and type 2 fibers. Type 1, or slow twitch, muscle fibers contain a large number of capillaries, mitochondria, which transform energy from food into ATP, or cellular energy, and myoglobin, which allows for improved delivery and oxygen. In capillaries, capillaries are the smallest blood vessels found within each of your muscle cells. They're responsible for the exchange of you know, oxygen, uh, deoxygenated blood. This is the this is the site where the the fatigue of your muscle gets replaced with the breath of more energy. Okay. Myoglobin is similar to hemoglobin, the red pigment found in red blood cells, and therefore type one muscle fibers are often referred to as the red fibers because they have more. They're they're known as your endurance muscles because they have more capillaries, more mitochondria, and more myoglobin, which allow it for more energy to be taking place. Now, type two muscle fibers or fast twitch muscle fibers are subdivided into type two A and type two X, based again on their chemical and mechanical properties. They generally contain fewer capillaries, mitochondria, and myoglobin, which is why they fatigue more quicker. So these ones are known as your strength fibers, you know, the muscles that you use for sprinting, you know, going fast, while the type 1 muscle fibers are used for endurance. They last longer. Okay? Type 2 muscle fibers are often referred to as the white fibers. Type 2X muscle fibers have a low oxidative capacity which means the ability to use oxygen and fatigue quickly. Type 2A muscle fibers have an o a higher oxidative capacity and fatigue more slowly than type 2X. Type 2A muscle fibers are also known as intermediate fast twitch fibers. They can use both aerobic and anaerobic metabolism. And aerobic metabolism is basically when your body's using oxygen to produce energy. It usually happens when you're running on the treadmill for up to... 10 minutes and going on to however long you want to. That is why when you start running, you know, you have to break through your threshold and then you feel like, you know, maybe after 5 6 minutes you feel like you could run for even longer because your body moves into the oxidative system and it starts to use oxygen to for energy production. Okay. Type 2 muscle fibers are also known as intermediate fast switch fibers. They can use both aerobic and anaerobic metabolism almost equally to create energy. In this way, they are a combination of type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. Type 1, or slow twitch muscle fibers, are smaller in size, basically diameter. They're thinner, slower to produce maximal tension, and more resistant to fatigue. Type 1 fibers are important for muscles that need to produce the long-term contractions necessary for stabilization and postural control. An example would be including sitting upright while maintaining ideal posture against gravity for an extended period of time. Fast twitch or type 2 muscle fibers are larger in size, quick to produce maximal tension, and fatigue more quickly than type 1 fibers. These fibers are important for muscles producing movement requiring force and power, such as performing a sprint, like we were saying earlier. It is important to note that all muscles have a combination of slow and fast twitch fibers that will vary depending on the function of the muscles. For example, it has been shown that the human anterior tibialis muscle, which is the muscles on your shin, has approximately 73% slow twitch type 1 muscle fibers whereas the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, or the superficial calf muscle, has approximately 49% slow twitch type 1 muscle fibers. Okay, now I'm going to go over and read you the table, basically a summary of everything we just read on the muscle fiber types. So, the type 1, or slow twitch muscle fibers, and their characteristics. 
They contain more capillaries, more mitochondria, and more myoglobin. They have an increased oxygen delivery. They are smaller in size. They are less. They produce less force. They are slower to fatigue. They have long-term contractions for stabilization, and they're slow twitch. Now, type 2 muscle fibers, which are the fast twitch, they have fewer capillaries, or their characteristics. They have fewer capillaries, mitochondria, and myoglobin. Decreased oxygen delivery, they are larger in size. More force produced, they, quick, they fatigue more quickly. They have short-term contractions, which is force and power, and they are fast twitch. Okay, now we're going to go over the muscles as movers. Okay, muscles provide the human body with a variety of functions that allow for the manipulation of forces placed on the body and to produce a slowdown movement. These, muscles, these muscle functions categorize the muscle as an agonist, synergist, stabilizer, and antagonist. Okay, so agonists. Agonist muscles are muscles that act as prime movers. Or, in other words, they are the muscles most responsible for a particular movement. For example, the gluteus maximus is the agonist for hip extension. Now, hip extension is when you bring your back leg, when you bring your leg to the back like that. Your gluteus maximus, or your butt muscles, are engaged to bring your leg back in that extension. Okay? So synergist muscles assist as prime movers during the movement. For example, the hamstring complex and the erector spinae are synergistic with the gluteus maximus during hip extension. So, synergist muscles, it's saying the, the erector spinae, which is the low back, and hamstring complex, which is the back side of your leg. So when you do the hip extension, your hamstring complex and your erector spinae are assisting your gluteus maximus in performing the hip extension. Okay. So stabilizer muscles support or stabilize the body, whereas the prime movers and the synergists perform the movement patterns. For example, the transversus abdominis, internal oblique, and multifidus, deep muscles in the low back, stabilize the low back pelvis and hips, the lumbopelvic hip complex during hip extension. Okay, so when you're doing the hip extension, the gluteus maximus is the prime mover, the hamstring complex and the erector spinae are assisting the prime mover, and your intrinsic core stabilizers and your deep muscle uh, multifidus, your whole lumbopelvic hip complex is stabilizing your body so these muscles can work together to produce that movement. Pretty cool, huh? Antagonist muscles perform the opposite action of the prime mover. For example, the psoas, which is a deep hip flexor, is an antagonist to the gluteus maximus during hip extension. So, basically the psoas has no function whatsoever in that movement because it's the antagonist, it's the opposite muscle. It is the muscle that needs to be relaxed in order for those muscles to do what they need to do. Okay, so now the summary. The muscular system is made up of many individual fibers and attaches to bones by way of tendons. There are different muscle fiber types and arrangements of them that affect how the body and how they move. Muscles generate force through neural activation. The, neuro the nervous system receives and delivers information throughout the body by way of neurons. The stimulation of the nervous system activates sarcomeres, which generates tension in that muscle. This tension is transferred through tendons to the bones, and this produces motion. Now remember, your bones are your structural framework. They will give your body its its frame. <laughs> the muscles are what allow you to move the skeletal system around by the way of tendons. Those tendons are what produce are what connects your muscles to your bones. So when you contract your muscle, it's pulling on the it's allowing the tendon to pull on the bone, which is allowing you to move. And then that in turn is happening because of your central nervous system is shocking the muscle to pull the skeleton to move around. 
And that is really cool. And that will be the end of the muscular system. That's the three for the whole kinetic chain, which is the human body movement, the central nervous system, the skeletal system, and the muscular system. Remember, these three need to work together. They work together to produce movement. And if any one of them are damaged or not coordinated correctly in any way, it, you could have a lot of... How can I say this? A lot of things that would need to be fixed. Okay? So, that being said, just keep that in mind because it's important to take care of your body because it's the only place you have to live. Okay? So, that being said, I'll see you on the other side of the galaxy. If you like this video, um, please share it. And um, also, subscribe. Uh, take care.